everyone keep your spine erect chin away from your chest eyes gently closed shift your eye gaze to the third eye the center of the eyebrows jyotishmati the light of awareness within take a deep breath inhale and exhale we'll begin today's session with the opening yc chant follow along om asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrutyor ma amritangamaya om shanti 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 namaste everyone what a beautiful uh, beautiful evening and uh, welcome to the the yec weekly satsang where we are explore, exploring the applied yoga philosophy as it relates to our contemporary life particularly for the youth so that they could cultivate the entrepreneurial and uh, and excellence mindset so today i know when we started this panel discussion we started about uh, uh, what yoga mindset is or what yoga means which is beyond the mat or beyond the physical practices on the mat you know so far we've explored you know the different aspects of the yoga including the yama niyama principles and uh, what are the types of you know abhyasa the practice and the growth mindset today we are going to get to the most popular limb which is the asana which is the uh, the physical postures which is the postures and we're going to explore the science and the philosophy behind it so i'm uh, super thrilled to have joined by my friends my gurus i refer to them as my pal gurus uh, shailesh rajesh kiran savita and uh, ramakanji so what we're going to do today is uh, unlike the previous panel discussions i'm going to open up with a question and i'm going to pick one person to lead the conversation and then i would encourage all the panel members to just chip in if you have other other points to add to the conversation and then we'll let the the conversation free flow into it and when we do when we exhaust all the points of view then we'll move on to the the different topic let's see how this uh, game plays out so with that let me start with the word asana asana in in the sanskrit actually it means to be seated down or to be rooted down comfortably in in one position so that's what asana actually means the way i understood it and then today when we look at the asana there are like so many postures and so many different things so i would love each one of you to provide your own elaboration of what asana means to you so shailesh go with okay. thank you srini ji um so again uh, very happy to be here uh, part of this esteemed panel very happy to share some of my thoughts again uh, uh, there's so much knowledge in this group i'll share a couple of thoughts and let uh, me hear from others too so welcome everybody uh, i see a lot of folks will joining in uh, welcome to the session so to talk about asana again it's very very deep concept deep subject uh, asana comes from the root word as or asi to me means to be or to sit so basically we know the words asana normally as a king's throne for example right hmm. so that's how it comes um, but it's slowly translated into all this physical postures where you don't sit but you actually do lot of other poses which are uh, even more like you know like a complex like a pretzel that's what they call right uh because if you go back uh, to the scriptures um uh, one of the one of the popular scriptures is hatha yoga pratipika by swami swatma rama he describes like 84 different asanas okay and in them he talks about some of the asanas which are the most popular right or most required in your journey and he only talks mostly about four asanas okay and these asanas are like padmasana siddhasana bhadrasana and simhasana right four asanas because historically all the uh, yoga scriptures talk about asanas are a step along the way going towards spiritual enlightenment right asanas are a way to relax the body it's making sure can you sit for an hour to do pranayama and meditation it's how you can 
have that strength within you how you don't have illness how you can come up overcome your antarayas and make sure you can sit for meditation and pranayama so the four asanas he talks about uh, are these four which are all sitting postures right and where you can actually sit for longer durations and become stronger to go to the other aspects of it right and uh, the other aspect i would just want to also share uh, you know today yoga became yoga asana yoga is equal to yoga asana for many folks right um, but uh, and, and there are a lot of benefits obviously like asanas people can realize the benefits very very quickly if you have a muscle issue if you have a back issue you do asanas you feel it but when you do meditation you don't know right i mean are you doing correctly or not are you okay? maybe you feel it a waste of time and so on right sometimes but if you take a look at even patanjali talks about asanas uh, not as much right he talks about at the three different places only right so i'll talk about it a little bit later but just wanted to give a glimpse in terms of uh, asanas are the means to relax the body right and they are uh, part of your spiritual journey and even swami swatmarama talks about them and swami patanjali talks about them uh, to some extent but as a means to go to the next level okay so i'll stop there swiniji and a lot of panel members are there just couple of thoughts from my side but but it's one of the most important and most popular rungs of ashtanga yoga for sure love it others continue the conversation rajesh savita akran Hey, Shri, that's a great start. And as you rightly pointed, um, when I started on this journey, it was like asana is synonymously yoga, right? Like yoga is asana, right? Um, and only with the with the Shri Nijis and Shri Ramjis Association, I learned it's actually you know one of the smallest uh, pieces of a bigger puzzle, rather. Um, but uh, yoga asana, the way I look at it, is like yeah, it's just a seating. posture as as the definition goes but really asanas are perhaps the easiest uh, vehicle for us to get into this journey right depending on the various gunas that each of us possess uh, perhaps like you know i am not ready to meditate i am not even ready to perhaps get to pranayama but i i'm just ready enough to get onto the mat and do some asanas right so to me asanas are like closest to my heart because it makes it easy for me to eventually uh, get where i want to get that's my personal association with asanas i'll pause there love it ramakant savita rajesh rajesh No, I came with a notebook, taking down no notes for everyone. So <laughs> I didn't study it that deeply, but for me, the the word when Nasini sent that note, uh, asana is posture. I was always thinking about where all we show up outside of the yoga asana. What posture do we show up with? And then do I show up with? I mean, even existing, how we how somebody walks into the room, they say no. Sometimes when somebody walks into the room, they want the everybody's posture to be towards them. or because they want the attention somebody somebody else walks into the room their posture is towards them because they want to serve so i am here in the posture of a student because i know by that i already feel and uh, more i have no more knowledge than before i came here so i'll just um, comment here and there but i'm here to learn today sorry so, and uh, maybe i'll add um, add to whatever is covered with this slide i think one of the things that i can also say is if you can keep if you can have your spine young if you can keep your spine young then you would be young is one of the definitions uh, of one of the masters right so all the organs and glands they being connected into the to the spine and uh, so like you know, the way you see the nerve spine nerve chart as well the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic how they connect to each other just a pictorial way and what an interesting way that each bone the c1 connecting to so many activities like it's responsible the pituitary gland the scalp the bones of the face so this part Uh, inspired me more about uh, asanas whenever i do any posture uh, the f- i would want to see how oh, how how are how is the posture how, where is it helping and the, the curvature here this is how the natural curve should be 
and <clears throat> any uh, as we grow up uh, when the bellies are increasing and so on the alignment changes and interestingly the areas that are supplied by these nerves which are responsible for all these organs start to get into these possible conditions for example just the 3c bone or let's say the 1c bone is talking about okay it's not fine then the headaches nervousness insomnia head colds migraine headaches i don't want to read this because i think we all will get a big headache or depression reading this right side so uh, my perspective of asanas is all about hey the, the vertebrae the disc and the nerve how healthy they are and uh, are they pinched are they slipped and so on so with that i will pause a little bit on the asanas tabita um asana is um Uh, as the sutra says it's tirasuka asana uh, so i used to uh, get intimidated when i see somebody did um, the kind of crazy postures and i can't reach there uh, but i think as the as the sutra says tirasuka asana like you know you have to be comfortable in whatever asana you do it can be simple uh, it doesn't have to you know bend to the point where <laughs> you are in pain your body leads you into that so that's one of my um, uh, discovery uh, discoveries the other thing is uh, i feel um, not i feel like what my own research or whatever it is i think uh, there's a word called av avratta chakshuhu that means uh, uh, putting your eyes inside i think that's what yoga asana and then leading into dhyana um uh, uh, pranayama and dhyana will uh, uh, lead you to to bring your inside to the inside instead of uh, constantly your um, sensory organs are constantly active outside so by doing yoga asana and pranayama it's it's the way it is arranged is very nice to um, get to avratta chakshu to become for you to become an avratta chakshu somebody inward put your eyesight from external source to inside so that's where then when once you once you're there then you'll able to um, know yourself better and um, lead your life with a um, more from the inside than outside out outer aspect so that's where i feel the journey of yoga the asana will take you in so yeah wow savita garu uh, i want to make sure is that from katha upanishad that which is what you study yes. uh, <laughs> yes. so um, Yes. So is it uh, what is the precise word is it aditya chakshu uh, or avartha it's um, avartha chakshu so where it says um, where uh, it's a challenge it's a, it's in the second chapter uh, so fourth chapter second part um, where it says all the sensory organs god has given from outside like to feel so by bringing everything inside yeah so yoga asana will assist you in doing that um, um yoga asana will assist you in doing that to bring your science side inside so that when you know better of yourself who you are like you know, then your actions will align and you you can get into um and that perhaps that's what understand we, uh, yeah perhaps you know patanjali says you move from bahiranga sadhana external practices to antaranga sadhana yeah antaranga sadhana the yeah. last limb so that you you get reposed in the thing so yeah. that's what a fantastic reflections in fact you know uh, um, rajesh ji if i go to build upon what you what you said and 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 everything that you said the way i started interpreting is asana is how we conduct ourselves on the life stage in every moment how rooted how comfortably that you are in every you know stage to be seated in so that you are in perfect alignment with the with the context so that you can put yourself um and in in the highest exuberance so that you can actually uh, operate you know uh, comfortably and then we're going to come back to it so this is where in fact you know if you are in a meeting are you in asana that means you know are you in 100% alignment with the with the decorum if i am at home am i in asana or in in all the things so the way i'm interpreting is asana is to be seated down or to be seated or to be rooted down in every aspect of the life and then the physical postures as a way to prepare your body so that you can be in the asana in your rest of, rest of life that is one interpretation that uh, that i uh, took away so the shailesh on that 
and that definition to be able to to be able to get there you know patanjali also talked about to be able to to be seated down to sit comfortably you know patanjali you know talked about the two primary aspects like the prayatna and chaitilya do you want to talk about you know what it takes to to actually get there uh, sure shrinidhi again a uh, lot of good reflections uh, i think uh, from all four of them continue to learn every day and talking to all these folks very nice to see that yeah um so one thing i wanted to uh, talk about uh, shrinidhi when you talked about uh, having this perfect posture in every facet every aspect right what rajesh ji talked about also right um so when we look at um, patanjali's uh, yoga sutra that sagita ji talked about on sthira sukham asanam normally we always look at the standard definition of uh, uh, every asana should have two qualities uh, the steadiness and also the comfort right sthira and sukha right and that's how i think you know we try to teach in the classes and make sure that people don't hurt themselves they are in a posture where they are steady but also they are relaxed and comfortable right but uh, taking that definition into next level uh, to relate to what you are saying uh, rajesh and srini ji sthira sukha has a different connotation also so now sthira sukha sthira is modifier for sukha in the sense when you are practicing very regularly are you able to get to a place where the sukha is everlasting sthira it's lasting it's steady forever it's modifier for sukha now right as opposed to is it asthira sukha maybe you did your postures for that one hour and then then you go back to your life but in the life you don't have the balance in the life you don't have this alignment we talked about so asana should be in a place where you should be getting that sthira sukha that is a sukha that is lasting forever that will give you the steadiness in every facet to talk about that's a beautiful interpretation that also learned it also also helps me to think about beyond the yoga mat right and then when we continue to practice with these aspects right steadiness comfort and lasting sukha then um, when we continue to practice and practice patanjali talks about in the next sutra the prayatna shaitilya ananta samapattibya right so a simple way to translate that for me is basically when does an asana become perfect right we talk about yes you have to be steady and comfortable but an asana becomes perfect when the effort to accomplish it ceases to exist an asana becomes perfect when the effort to accomplish it ceases to exist and you can get there by practice 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 effort is required prayatna effort right because when you look at it right if somebody comes to the class they can do halasana very very easily they can go touch their toes behind their back but i have somebody in my class who is not even able to lift their back to do halasana it's a journey for them how did this person get there and then there's people who go to halasana they need help to come back they cannot come back by themselves so it's in all variations so just giving the uh, example because an asana becomes perfect when you know you you can accomplish it effortlessly and that's what patanjali talks about in prayatna shaitilya ananta samapattibhyam you basically are one with the infinite right you are in the beautiful bliss in every asana you merged with infinite right that's why i take a look at it you start with steadiness comfort you get to that sthira sukha lasting one then you keep practicing with that mindset and eventually you can get to a place where this become effortless and then you're able to enjoy every portion and be in bliss in every portion others ramaka anything you want to add um not on this one yeah <clears throat> i'd like to uh, later at some point i'd like to present the uh, items where the combo of uh, ayurveda and the asanas that's that's another topic i wanted to keep in so yeah yeah let's well, let's <laughs> the next time. that will actually get to get to that dimension yes um kiran yes ash i had a question for shailesh she trying to understand uh, that particular sutra and the next steps so once we get to this uh, level wherein the effort ceases to exist right so we are there uh, pretty much without any additional effort being put in so in that state what is our like in you know, a body and mind going through are we purely reaping the benefit or we 
uh, too comfortable that our body doesn't really get the physical benefit, right? Because in the modern uh, fitness world, people say that, hey, you want to put your body through unexpected action, right? For, for the body to react and respond. Um, so I wanted to understand, you know, what happens when I get very comfortable with Halasana, I can do it. I can stay there as if I'm just sitting. How is that still benefiting my body and my mind? If you could share mm -hmm. some thoughts. Yeah. Sure. So, um, Srinidhi, should I go ahead or? Uh, uh, I mean, I have a point of view on that, but why okay, don't you? Go ahead. And then, and then, and then, uh, and then, why don't you? Why don't you answer it, and then I'll add my much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kiran Jethi. It's a very good question. Um, so, I would say just a couple of things from my side on that aspect, right? So, uh, even when you do asanas effortlessly, when you're holding them for some time, still you're going to get this physical benefits, right? Especially if you're taking the example of halasana, right? The way the back is, the way the internal organs are being nourished and massaged, right? The way the blood is flowing in the inversion, all those benefits will come to you, right? But they're coming a little bit more effortlessly, right? Because you're able to stay in that state, right? The physical benefits are continuing to happen. But more importantly, the way I see when you're able to get to that state is every posture becomes a meditation of its own. You get to deep meditative state in every posture. For example, can you stay, can you do your yoga postures, yoga practice for one hour without opening your eyes, without reaching for props, without struggling? And then, then you get to deep meditative state. And that's the beauty of it. You enjoy the postures, but because we talk about, right, at the end of the day, the benefits are not physical. The benefits are even beyond that where you are able to focus inwards, you're drawing senses inwards, you're able to get to meditative state, take the mind to highest levels of refinement and concentration. And you're getting there through every portion. And that's the way I see it. Yeah. One, one dimension that I would like to hear is, oh, let's go back to what Patanjali said and also it's corresponding uh, synergy with the flow theory. So depending upon where you are, what your stage, you know, sometimes you know, some people may be able to touch their toes or not. For each one of them, you have your own effort that is defined, like tapas swadhyaya ishwar pranidana. With your asana, depending upon your flexibility level, you have to put your effort that is 10%, 20% beyond your capability at that time. So for each one that is different. In fact, you know, somebody is, whose body is more flexible, they also have to put that effort to go beyond 10 to 10 to 20%. And, and that is, that is what, how we need to present ourselves in every life stage. Take control of, take full awareness of your capability, your faculties, and then up deploy them to about 10 to 20% beyond your capability. And then what happens is when you're constantly applying it, it actually has a cumulative power, an exponential power that leads to a transformation. So, so somebody who is not flexible, somebody, let's say a 70 or 80 year old, their journey to the infinite is very different than somebody who has a very flexible body. Both of them have to work equally hard. So that is one, one uh, you know, thing that I, that, I resigned, uh, that I understood. It's just like each one has its own. That's the reason one of our uh, philosophy says there are infinite ways to get to infinity. Each one of has our own unique path. And going back to what uh, Ramakanji said, you know, when he showed the spine, one of the things that I understood is every entity, every planet in this solar ecosystem has a perfect geometry, you know, they, they rotate in certain orbit. So we are blessed with, you know, like, you know, if you assume ourselves to be a planet or a star, we have to get this into a perfect geometry so that we also rotate, you know, perfectly well. But what we do is we do not align our entire body into the perfect orbit in the geometry. That's why our perception is not right. We don't get into that Sankhya state. So all these asanas are designed so that you know, we can get our body into the perfect orbit so that we are also rotating like every other entity in, this, in the world that has a perfect geometry. So that is a dimension that I understood. You know, uh, anybody heard about or any, any thoughts to add on this geometry and you know, asana is a way for us to align perfectly in this, uh, in this cosmos? Ramaka? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so uh, for me, uh, whenever whatever Shailesh was telling, I immediately could say that if the asana could be treated as a state, the state of being, 
outside in the outside world I'm, let's say somebody needs to be in a state of being uh, of generosity as a state of being so first is to start with the intention i need to be generous and sooner than later you start seeing possibilities to give and after some time it becomes a way of life where you are being generous and you are not thinking about it but as it becomes easy for you valuable for them so as long as we aim for it for uh, somebody looking at you may it may look like magic but for the person performing it's not magic it is a way of being that's what i thought mm-hmm, mm-hmm. any any other reflections see the so, geometry so, thing that you brought up also is uh, uh-huh. like like the other one which we said where we said uh, if you keep your spine young you want to be young and so on even in the puja concept um they consider the the body to be a sri yantra ha uh-huh. ha and this is so wonderful i mean probably some other time will be get a chance of how all those nava avaranas right, all the symmetries that form how it is and so on and of course going a, a little bit deeper in this sri yantra is also about five triangles uh, or what about five and four from the other side eventually form the three and three which is nothing but the yin and the yang within us so this right. there's plenty of fun stuff right. i'll i'll pause there i think you know the the way i understood and i would love everybody to uh, chip in on this when i studied you know hatha yoga pradipika versus patanjali yoga sutra and different different things in the patanjali asanas is one of the one of the limbs of the egg but the entire effort is to asanas is a way to prepare your body so that you can get to your antaranga sadhana and that's how you can actually get to get to the enlightenment or or realize the the infinite so you better as uh, the way i understood from the hatha yoga pradipika is where hatha yoga actually relies your body this this asanas is the primary way of connecting to the uh, the infinity the enlightenment you can actually yoke your body so that you can get your energies aligned up and that's how you can actually tune to the tune to the universe in fact hatha it means force is a forceful using shat karmas using you know all the different you know limbs and you know postures and uh, nauli so you tune your entire body energies so that it can actually prepare you to get to the get to the enlightenment so any thoughts from uh, any one of you on the different emphasis whereas the hatha yoga uses your body as the primary vehicle to actually get to the enlightenment versus you know other texts where body is just there to sit you into the into the meditation to actually get there any 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 thoughts about this two different point of views shaili i can go i uh, sarita ji please go ahead and not you and me no 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 go ahead please go ahead shaili ji please yeah thank you um so um, so the way I look at it uh, right srinidhi basically when we um, look at even patanjali yoga sutras um, he talks about three sutras for asanas in the third sutra he talks about tataha dwandva anabhigata right then also he is talking about if you continue to practice practice with uh, this elements we talked about sthira sukha prayatna shaiti all of those right you get to a state where you you are one with this universe right that's what we talk about jivatma paramatma and all of those aspects basically all the duality ceases to exist right so you continue to be in that oneness that you talk about right a lot so he talks about that you can get to the deep state just with asanas also right but what happens for us is in the modern life we go through so much of stimulation so much of sedentary lifestyle that we have and we need something for our senses and the mind for sure right so you cannot just do asanas and be in that state where you can go to that dwandva anabhigata ka fully right so that's why when you continue to practice then you have to you have to be in a state where you can also continue to meditate in some form meditation doesn't always mean sit and then the half an hour close your eyes and do things like that even you can meditate by doing karma yoga you can do bhakti yoga a lot of things could be meditation but are you able to do those things um because those are the ones have shown to calm the mind lot more in, in this day of life right 
because if you take a look at the days of patanjali or even days of buddha for example if you take a look at it in in buddhism they really don't talk as much about asanas it's a lot about sitting in padmasana doing meditation right they directly jump there and then from there they go to the state of nirvana and things like that right so we have a lot of different schools of thought but the way i see it is from modern day we are sedentary lifestyle so much stimulation so much devices so much information we need um, something more than asanas to calm our mind that's why so many other techniques we talk about which are beyond the yoga mat definitely will help us so that's the perspective i think about it, that sometimes asanas can help if you're in the right frame of mind but many times we might need a little bit more than that hmm so good sabita uh i i feel that um the uh, whatever you take yoga sutra or pradipika uh, um, explanation uh, body uh, we need to prepare it's like in order to um, fetch water you need a vessel right so in, in the same way we need to keep this in order to the prana to move from the force to move we need to keep this Uh, body in in a condition where optimally we can use it right like if i have a bigger pot i can get more water i can if a smaller pot but uh, it's it's like that so uh, um asana um, is a stepping stone for many things not just uh, um to get inward um uh, practice uh, as uh, shalish ji said like you know distractions are so many uh, like for my own personal before i would sit down for meditation without doing asana very difficult to concentrate like or not concentrate or bring the mind silence um with the uh, asana getting then getting into pranayama then getting into uh, dhyana was easier i'm not saying it's it's the piece of cake <laughs> definitely the path felt ha huh, le- less noise comparative so um asana um, is uh, the first step for i feel for everything else like going through um, i don't know if we all want if, if eventually we want to get into uh, samadhi or not but at least uh, to quiet this mind and quiet this distraction and just um, just to know ourselves to to some degree i think asana is a stepping stone uh, stone that's my so one one thing that i would add here is uh, number one shaili ji i have a slightly different understanding of the third sutra where from the patanjali standpoint anabigataha one of the interpretations that i read is the dwandvas within will be reduced but not completely eliminated with just the physical practices so for for the for the impurities to be completely or the vrittis to be completely eliminated you need to do dhyana that's when am dukkamanavagatam or tatra dhyana jama nashayam so and so but what asana will do is it will reduce the conflicts within the body and the mind so that it prepares to get to the the meditative state so that is the role of the the asana uh, that's what i uh, and that's an interesting sutra we will we will actually spend a little bit more time on the on the asanas asanas benefits the savita garu like what you said and this view of the patanjali like what you said asana prepares you the vessel to get into that meditative state whereas if you look at the hatha yoga or something that i am subscribing to now is that asanas are so craftfully designed to actually just within the posture because there are so many details there it in asana can itself be viewed as a a meditative experience as a meditative experience in fact you know if if somebody were to master all the intricate details in every posture like you know what i've heard is every asana consists of four things which is shwasa uh, vinyasa drishti and sthiti so those are the four what it means is number one how well you're conducting your breath in a, in a posture most of the time when we are doing the prayatna shaitilya in asana we have a struggling breath so the goal is how long can you be in the in the in the posture where your breath is so either comfortably or with ujjayi or i've seen some people where they are actually doing with kumbhaka where they literally seize the breath they hold the breath and then stay in that pose for a long time that's the highest mastery so it's about how well you are handling the breath and then the second one is vinyasa how 
joyfully you enter the pasture and you exit out of the pasture which is like almost feels like a dance a very graceful entrance and this stuff today when you are doing the practice most of them either they struggle to get in the pasture there is only rush to get to the end point and then when they exit out if you closely avoid everybody wants to get out of the pasture as quickly as possible and but but the real mastery of the asana is is vinyasa how gracefully you enter the pasture and you come back the way you went into the pasture and literally that's how we need to conduct ourselves in every life situation when you go into the meeting how beautifully you pass into the meeting and then you exit out of the meeting most of the time when you come out of the meeting i was like good riddance you know i just want to get out of it right so that's the same behavior that you see uh, that reflected on the mat and then the third one is drishti once you master your breath once you master the vinyasa how you enter the 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 action and you exit out of the action then drishti when you are there how well are you concentrated and and most of the time that's why when we are actually doing it drishti we basically try to shift the attention to either one part within the body or in front of it but eventually you would want to master your drishti where you become aware of every inch of your body and that is actually when you are in 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 any posture if you can start scanning from the toes to the top of the head and are you in a wear that is a, that's in itself is a mastery in that and then the last one is stiti then once you have mastered the breath and then uh, the vinyasa and the and the drishti then stiti can you actually be in that posture for a long time but that is not a that is the meditation stuff where you are you don't give up the effort you're still acting in the flow state you're constantly doing it but you don't feel like there is a movement so these are the four attributes of an asana that i learned that number one we have to master in every posture that we do but also in every action that we do in every event any any thoughts on this four dimensions of an asana that anybody have Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Totally wonderful, yeah, actually. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, explaining on those. I mean, for me, um, interestingly, never never learned any postures or uh, from anybody, and was automatically able to do any posture. And, and maybe to taking uh, taking grant of. Uh, of the gift that i got but in the recent years at least since i am starting to no, thanks uh, thanks to yeah that's it so now let me actually get a little bit uh, of a, a a a lighter thing so now everybody share your uh, interesting posture and why who wants to go first i can go i'll first. go first yeah go ahead <laughs> even, even in the audience everybody everybody please feel free to join yeah okay then all right so that interesting posture changes time to time that i have to say right and most of the times the interesting posture is the one where i'm struggling right because i am putting my effort in there so right now as we speak the most interesting posture is shirshasan right which i'm trying to uh, accomplish um, so of course i have some folks at home trying to you know criticize me teach me like you know teach and all that uh, but definitely one of those they say it's like you know king of postures i mean uh, actually rajesh you were saying right when the magician is doing magic for others it looks like magic for them it's state of being so i would like to you know experience that you know the full inversion and still feel at rest mm-hmm. still be able to breathe and i feel that i can apply that kind of perception to other things that like everyday experiences as well like you know look at things look at world in a different um, angle different direction the kiran uh, thank you so much for sharing i always felt that you know shirshasanam is a is a, a an entry criteria to to belong in your house Yeah, I thought you, your family is a Shirshasanam family, and I have a this beautiful experience. Uh, well, I think in December 2019, we conducted a yoga foundations camp in Kiran's house, and where uh, Gopi Kiran's husband's Gopi's parents also fully participated in that entire satsang, and we had this beautiful experience where Gopi's dad 
uh, Kiran's dad, who is, I think back then is like 80 plus. He did the Sher Sasana with Gopi and Gopi's son, Shauryan. All the three of them did the Sher Sasana. And it was a, it's a master uh, moment, you know, to see three generations of folks, um, you know, to, to be able to perform Sher Sasana. So I, I'm actually glad, I'm, I'm surprised that you still haven't learned Sher Sasana and you still belong in the house. Not only belong in the house, you run the house. So, <laughs> so you know, we need to figure, figure that imbalance out. But, but here is some secret that I would actually tell you, which is that even when they are trying to make fun of you, you can actually go back to these four dimensions which is like, you know, Shwasa, uh, Vinyasa, if Gopi is doing, you know, hey, your Vinyasa is not right, you know, you're this thing, right, so that they also have some homework to do. So, so that way, we, you're, all, you're all beginners in your, in your journey from wherever you are, right? So that's a cool thing. So others, your favorite posture? Uh, for me, I don't know the name of it, but first time when I saw people doing it, I thought, this one, I can never do it, impossible. And slowly, but I kept trying it, and the, the posture, I can show it. It goes like this, you hold your leg, and then you turn, and then you hold the hand. I don't know what, what ah, do you do. Chendra Asana, half Asana Chendra Asana. Oh, yeah. Asana. Which is, uh, which that is was very so good. Yeah. I feel so good. After I finish, do it, it feels so good. Uh, so I really like it. I, I'm sitting there, and for people who have not done it, they'll think, I can also do it. And when they try it, they can't do it. So it's fun for me. But now, now that you told me that Kiran's house the entrance criteria is Shirsasana, then I will not get any coffee tea there. So that is <laughs> out. <laughs> so for me, um, uh, Shini, I like uh, Sukhasana. I like Shavasana because after one hour of workout, generally that is really a kind of peace, you know. And some of my favorite are also the child pose and snake pose. I don't know what you call that. Uh, in yoga uh, but these are some of my favorite poses or asanas uh -huh. that's an interesting point what I figured out in my experience and, and a lot of people's experience that Shavasana is probably the most difficult posture to do. Shavasana is, is the hardest 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 posture so we'll actually come back to that and uh, and and I would love everybody because to from 2008 I'm doing yoga and uh, they used to say, uh, you know, we used to do uh, Shavasan and we used to be in Shavasan for at least a minute, at least a minute. And we used to close our eyes and we used to be in that. And then it used to be such a different world altogether. It used to be really amazing. Yeah, Shavasan is, uh, as the name says, Shava, you literally would have to be dead. This is like where you suddenly disconnect yourself from this world, thoughts and everything. And then you become like, you know, this is the practice of being dead before being dead. So that's actually a, had a fantastic exploration of this Shavasana in, in something that, that in itself is a, a big topic that we're going to get into in some, some of the subsequent sessions. So others, the, and, and one other thing, you know, let me close the loop on Rajesh. The Ardhamaschendrasana, there is a, an interesting thing. That's a ticket to earn your license to eat more donuts. Or if you're a big fan of sugar, you have to do more of this Sardamasya and Asana. You know, if somebody likes, you know, holy gay, you know, then they would have to, you know, increase their practice of Sardamasya uh, uh, and Asana because it, it actually helps regulate your uh, insulin. So for, for, for people who have any diabetes or pre-diabetes, you know, this stuff. So people who would want to engage their sense of not the, the check shoe that Savita talked about going inward if you still want to do the Bhairanga sadhana with your donuts. So this is another way, you know, eat one donut, then the twist, and then for 30 minutes, then again, you eat one more and then you again twist. So that's a, a good, uh, good That's a great if, tip. Uh, very good. <laughs> if that's what you want to engage the life, you know, in the thing is, do it. And then at least it reduces the conflicts. That's what I want, but Kavita does not want that too for me, so I have to be careful. <laughs> good, good, good. Savita, your, your favorite posture? Um, I don't have any favorite postures because I thought I had favorite postures, but then I realized uh, it's, it's the state of mind I enter into the yoga class, I feel. The day I am balanced and like, you know, in everything, when I enter into yoga, every asana is like amazing. I am able to balance, rukshasana, um, you know, everything. I'm able to bend better. So the whole um, um, series of um, 
one hour of yoga class feels amazing that day i feel i love every posture i don't know how much i hit hit each and every area but it feels good that day like you know hey i did amazing that's how i feel um so the days are when you know the the whole day or world is is all ups, up sat down i can feel that i am not because again because the mind engagement right like the mind engagement so that day i am not in balance even the basic postures like basic things are not in alignment uh, as shri mentioned that you know breath and everything forget everything that day <laughs> nothing is in alignment <laughs> so i realized over time that there is no like oh i can hit this every day it's like a it's like a tennis player right they will have one hit they may be able to after so many practice they are able to hit that that becomes their favorite i i think for me i would say more like how i enter into yoga asana or like the, the practice um or how the my mind is there at that point of time state of mind entering into kind of affects that day uh that's being said what i have seen uh, you know part making fun of the whole of the process uh one thing i've learned is for me was getting out of asana was, was very important next 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 uh so over the period i have learned to stay in the asana longer like you know oh my god it starts hurting but still it continues staying two more breaths five more breaths uh that extend extended stay in each asana has helped me a lot like that calms me and um kind of um um i don't know how to say it's 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 brought out a different um approach uh, and a different experience for the same yoga practice so that's my experience others kailesh shamakan and kavita garu on the in the audience if you want to share your favorite uh posture as well kailish yeah um so uh chini ji yeah so um again as kavita ji mentioned it changes over time uh, based upon where you are in your life right so one of the postures i like it's interesting is uh, what i call the mayurasana but with the variation where you have padmasana and mayurasana right um so i like it uh, because uh, it continues to challenge me to hold it longer it continues to challenge me to uh, just give me one second uh, um continues to challenge me to um, close my eyes can you see my screen yes i've seen that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so this is a recent posture uh, uh, near this waterfall near our house right so um you can try to cold, close your eyes in the balancing postures um and also the other thing is right um, i've been teaching a lot of kids classes they get excited they get motivated inspired right and they go try complex poses and then try to continue to learn and shirshasana was one of them obviously that everybody tries to aspire in my uh, kids classes but this another posture they see wow i mean can i try to get there and then they start start first of all a lot of them have trouble to get padmasana right so then it as long as they're motivated to learn new things uh, that's what actually keeps me interested also so just Uh, that's one aspect why i continue to learn some postures and uh, but keep it part of my practice yeah others ramakan any posture is your favorite yeah uh, postures no nothing uh, specific the, the, the fun part is uh, uh, whether it is any session after we start with the om it's always it's totally blank throughout the session like probably what uh, sajaj ji was talking about so in fact it was uh, very difficult um, even even in the classes even i had to tell swami ji the same story uh, swami i don't know what happens after om then when the class is done when we are wearing my i'm wearing my sandals i have to remember oh, what is my name and literally every class okay this is my name okay this is where i am okay this is where i need to go that is the only experience it's, it's consistently like that and uh, even in the teaching aspect too never plan just everything flows just you know, this total yoga ness i would say with that back <clears throat> no shailesh i see that you you are constantly referring me to shrini ji you know let's all be reminded that i'm one year younger to you so at least you know keep that on the record um so coming back to 
coming back to the thing, you know, about my own experience, the one asana that I resonated a lot was uh, standing bow or the Nataraj asana. When I first first introduced to that, and I just could not believe how you could bring so many things. I almost felt like I, I became the real Shiva, where I'm really reaching and expanding the entire universe where you know the details of you know kicking and stretching and you know you you're all like becoming such this uh, an expansive being of yourself and every time i get into the posture and you be like you know you suddenly is like i'm becoming the shiva it almost feels like a cosmic dance to me and that was the experience and i'm i've discussed this with you know a couple of other people you know doing that nataraja posture everybody felt like it's a it's a, it's a dance and, and I was never knew about that, that the posture could be done like this, because this, uh, this when I joined Bikram Yoga is when, you know, this is, a, is an important posture. Until that time, every yoga class, nobody really taught me, even if they taught it, you know, just, you know, do this. Here is a systemic way of, you know, you kick, you kick, and then, you know, go reach uh, your full potential. That was a, is a beautiful thing. So to me, it gives me the joy of sometimes feel this expansiveness where I'm owning the universe, and that ex expression or the feeling that I get is, is, a, is a beautiful thing. And then the second... And I do yeah. want to add the, to that, right? Um, absolutely. The way you broke down Nataraj Asana into multiple steps, like sequence of steps, and how you teach the asana is exceptionally unique. And I'm one of the many lucky people to have learned that asana from you. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I think I, that I, one... I second that, uh, Kiran. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> and and the and the beauty of that asana is it brings three different dimensions of balance, strength, and uh, and the cardio. The three elements are there in that one posture, you know, because all the others are you know simple balance or other thing. This is a it's a unique combination of these things. And the journey is to the infinite. There's so much, you know, when you can kick all the way, when you, your knees become straight, and then there is only an infinite that we can, we can, we can go there. So uh, thank you for that. And then the second thing that I really learned in my experience is uh, I never really connected to the Surya Namaskar before. I felt like, you know, this is a 12 step and so on and so forth until I went to Yoga Hari Ashram. And the way they thought this entire Surya Namaskara as, as a flow, and then, you know, some of us, you know, who participate in the thing, then I combined it with half moon flow, that Surya Namaskara, the sequence, and I think, you know, we should have a separate discussion on that. And the, the thing is, sometimes I refer to this as a sun moon flow. We're just doing the Surya Namaskar with the half moon on, on both sides. And again, feels like a cosmic dance experience. And, you know, it's, it's, I call this as an instant energy capsule. When I'm deeply stressed out, all I need is two Surya Namaskars that I need to do and do the sideways stretch. It's an instant energy, you know, in a pill. But at the same time, it's, it's relaxation. Unlike if you go for running, you know, it puts a lot of strain. This is one where it energizes and relaxes at the same time. That's the beauty of uh, the, the science of the asana postures. And any other... Uh, Asana experience, your favorite thing? And then I will... Uh, I wanted to add one thing, uh, Shini. So for us, when we were doing yoga for a long time, right? From two, 20 or 2008. So they used, to, they used to say, practice Surya Namaskar, at least 20, 25 Surya Namaskar daily. Even I tell this to my mom also. Because Surya Namaskar is one asana, which is a complete body workout. It will enhance your every part of your body flexibility. If you just do Surya Namaskar, maybe 10 Surya Namaskar or 15 Surya Namaskar daily, they say that should be enough for your body. That improves flexibility, strength and balance. So that is what, you know, uh, they generally say about Surya Namaskar. Yep, yep, yep. We'll, we'll actually talk about this. Surya Namaskar is a, is a great science, actually. We'll, we'll have yeah. a... A separate focus session on uh, I mean there's so much to explore on the science it's such a fascinating thing the inversions and the vena cave you know uh, how it helps you know to you know strengthen your heart pump and so you know the spine strengthening there's so many facets of these asanas I'm actually super inspired how these uh, folks conceive this greatest science just by using what you have with you all the time that's just your limbs and your body 
you can actually create the infinite magic to be tuned to the universe. I mean, this is, this is, uh, there's no science that's greater than this. So, so we'll explore uh, this fantastic dimensions of it. So any other asana experience? And then I would also want to, you know, for today's session end with, you know, is there any posture that you hated? And, and Kiran particularly, I really liked your mindset. The one that you're struggling is what your favorite posture. This is absolutely the, the growth mindset that every one of us need to own. And that's what we talked about in the last week, you know, the Kaplan wax, you know, when you, when you look at that is the, is the, is the greatest opportunity. And on that note, any, any posture that, that we all hate. Oh, no, first, uh, uh, being, I've come from the linguistic philosophy. I can suggest with your permission, Kiranji, I can say that instead of struggling, you can say one that is challenging me, it will make it even more easier. Yes, absolutely. Love it. And uh, Rajesh, we need to do a, a focus session on your linguistic thing. I mean, it, it just completely reframes our being and, and rewires our, our, our DNA. Right? So we'll, we'll do that. So any posture that, that we hate? Sorry, sorry. I, I, I need to be a good learner. Any posture that is challenging you the most? <laughs> Shirsasana so for me. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Shirsasana is for me. Yeah. Uh, it's a work in progress. That's how I would call it. <laughs> Actually, that's good to hear that there is a work in progress happening. That's a good one. So, that's it. That's, so I'm going to count on that. There is progress happening. Okay. Any, any other? Yeah. There was one asana called crow walk. Actually, I don't know what exactly asana is that. So um, the crow walk was the most or challenging, I have to say, challenging for me, where uh, you have to, uh, I don't know how many of you have practiced that. It is called as a crow, crow walk or duck walk, something like that. That asana was the most difficult one. So... Bakasana probably uh yeah one asana that was like putting your hand and lifting on the shoulders your... exactly, exactly, right? yeah exactly. so it was like very difficult for me uh, and i used to feel the pain you know uh, so it was challenging i should not say any other word other than challenging now yeah challenging for me good, good, good. So um, I know we are coming up on a, on a time and uh, what a fantastic thing. Like I said, there were so many, what I learned to uh, realize with this asana practice is initially it's all about the drama of exhibitionism, the, the darshan, but later on, as I started getting deeper into it, this is one of the greatest science and the tool. I'm, I'm with Hatha Yoga Pavipika, where you can actually use the technique of the postures to improve your concentration skills, improve your expansiveness, to improve your oneness. And this is one of the greatest assets. And all it requires is a six, by, six feet by three feet space. And you can actually practice this wherever you are, wherever you are with everything that you already got with you. And what a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful thing. So any, any an other- Even Srini? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Not only uh, airplane, you know, it was all the all the things. So, any any others have any closing thoughts, and uh, we'll we'll adjourn for today. Shailish or anyone have any closing thoughts? So, so the uh, the one liner was about uh, just this idea. Let's say you know somebody in the summer season, somebody has. A lot of inflammation issues or you know, heat related issues. And then, inspired by yoga, we enter into some hot yoga. Let's say. So, that will aggravate the overall story. So, do keep in mind that uh, the pitta related bodies, the vata related bodies, right, the, uh, some may need balancing postures, some may need calming postures, and some may need a lot of exercise. The kapha related bodies need pretty heavy stuff whereas in the reverse for what are related things. so do keep it keep that in mind and that really helped me a lot uh, in, in explaining others as well as in understanding my, myself back to you madam akanji thank you for the great point um you know i think understanding our individual body types and designing or creating a custom solution that works for you right i think that's the key and actually we would request as a follow-up uh, perhaps you to do one of those sessions to better understand right like you know uh, what suits 
one like one individual come other versus a, a template or a blanket solution Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. I did an experiment. Most of it is actually I used my body as an experiment. This is like you know where you know there was a thyroid. I used to have this hyperactive thyroid, and then everybody is like you know when you have a hyperactive thyroid, you know you're not supposed to do any one of these sarvangasana or any one of those you know, postures because that helps with the stimulant. But later on, what I realized is yoga allows you to get you the perfect balance. So instead of what some used to be a contraband, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But later on, what I realized is uh, I did have to let go of these postures. But eventually, the yoga, everything gets into the perfect balance. So that's that's from my experiential thing. So in fact, my doctor used to tell me, your thyroid is going to bust. You know, it's going to explode. That's it. You won't be without thyroid with the with the amount of you know this thing. And then that thing seemed to have reversed. And now my thyroid seems to be anything. And I kept on doing my Sarvangasana and this and this and stuff. So I don't know. There is some magic that's happening. But let's actually look at all this, uh, uh, the facets of uh, this stuff. So Shailesh, any closing thoughts for you? Uh, so a lot of beautiful uh, aspects I learned today from all of you. Definitely you know, very nice to hear everybody. Uh, just one thing I would say is, of course, everybody here is um, you know, very, very big practitioner. So not for this audience, but when you think of asana, it always relates to practice, right? Getting onto the mat and doing something, right? So as uh, Swami Shivananda says, right? Uh, an ounce of practice is, is worth a lot more than a ton of theory. So just share that, that, you know, whatever we talk, 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 but at the end of the day, get people to the mat. When you talk of asanas and have them, Practice asanas. That's what I would say today. What a what a fantastic way to end the thing. It always comes down to abhyasa. It's, it's a take a practice, and let's also bring back to the the word asana. It's not just about what we do in the in the postures. It's about how we conduct ourselves in the on the life stage. So let's all strive to be in that asana state in in whatever the situation that we are in, in the perfect posture, in the perfect alignment, so that we can present our 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 uh, best self in each and every best and harmonious being in each and every moment. So with that, Kiran, since you are here, official closing ceremony. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Om Shanti 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 Thank you everyone for the wonderful session and have a very good evening. Thanks everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.